Hello StarCraft fans, this is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. This is a game between Swaghar and Cut Your Ribbon <laughs> on Galactic Process the Ladder Edition. That's a good name. In the top right side of the map, we have the red Zerg player. It is Cut Your Ribbon. And in the bottom left side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. It is Swaghar. So this is a High Masters replay sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. With the subject of High Masters, and it looked to be a pretty interesting game, so I'm going to go ahead and cast it for you today. Quick shout out to all of my patrons, Nicholas Cheek, 19 Days, Sean Galvin, and Nick Riley, Josh Cornelius, Jin, Pedro Botsaris, Robert Farmer, KN, Keith Garlow, Matt Meermans, Hakan, Marcus, Christopher, Alex Coffey, Ben Raboyne, Alexander Canaris, Michael Wellen, Plaid, Complex, Clayton Knight, Ian Westbrook, Michael McIntosh, Jan Kodera, Beau Brissette, Kale Anderson, Pushback Eledu, Trevor Smith, Men Hadin, Rajiv Bhatt, Back Bertie, and Sip Kopada. Dun, 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 dun. Again, link in the top right if you'd like to support the channel. Patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin. All right, hatch first. Out of Cut Your Ribbon Probe scouts this thing out. Isn't able to block it, unfortunately, for the Swaghar. Swaghar is opening up gateway first into an assimilator, into what I assume will be a nexus based on the clicks I just saw showing up at that natural base. Here comes the probe. Just waiting for those oh-so-precious 400 minerals to come in. And there it is. There it is. Third hatch coming up from Cut Your Ribbon. Whoa. Three hatch before anything else. Before extractor, before pool. Cut Your Ribbon. Feeling, feeling, uh, feeling his oats today, I would say. Pool coming up now. But man, three hatch before pool against a very standard opener from your Protoss player. Swaggar either needs to find a way to out-macro this... Or punish it. Those are his options right now. Cybernetics core is just now completing. I think, I don't know, maybe a big adept attack in a couple minutes might be enough to slow down Cut Your Ribbon, but Cut Your Ribbon, taking a risk. Taking a risk indeed. He wasn't so crazy to go three hatch into extractor and then into pool. He did go pool first. So he will have some defense with queens and stuff here in a minute, but as it stands, extractor now pops inside his main base. No workers on that yet. Come on. Come on, cut your ribbon. If you have an extractor, you need to have stuff mining from it. It is a tradition. It is a truth of StarCraft ever since StarCraft 1. So, really? No? Well, for sure you'd have some workers in there by the time I was done with my rant. Okay, no gas income whatsoever for cut your ribbon. He should be just fine. Ah, I thought I could catch him. So, <laughs> Cybernetics Core is complete. Twilight Council being warped in by Swaghar. That's what that sound was. And finally getting workers on that gas. All right, come on, Cut Your Ribbon. We got this thing. APM for these dudes is around 100 on average, about 200 for Cut Your Ribbon. Not super high for a Swaghar currently. But you know what? Protoss, you can be okay with, like, not super duper high, uh, super high APM. Anyway, Cut Your Ribbon is now starting to saturate his third base. Adept did show up. Trying to kill some stuff. Trying to kill these drones that are just now spawning. Can she get it? Sonic transferred somewhere. Where did you go? Oh, getting surrounded by drones. What? Queen, help out. Queen, you have DPS. Get in there. Oh, can the Adept survive? Can the Adept survive before the Psionic transfer? No. Nope. Does not happen. Uh, no workers killed. I think one Ling was killed there. Wait. Swaggar didn't kill anything with that Adept? Ouch. Ouch. That is a rough, rough opening. That is a rough opening indeed, especially considering you really had to punish this from Cut Your Ribbon or you are in so much trouble. When it comes to the mid game, which seems moderately possible. Evolution Chamber coming up before Cut Your Ribbon. We're going to call him Ribbon from now on, just because, again, names with really lots of syllables are difficult for me to do. Petit Drogo being an exception, as it, I don't know, it just kind of flows off the tongue. Petit Drogo, Petit Drogo, Petit Drogo. It just feels like two syllables rather than four, which is what it is. Dun. Injects coming up from Ribbon. Inject over here in the natural. It is time. There you go. Good job, Queen. Good job getting that thing done. Stalkers chasing slow lings. Cut your Ribbon trying to move out there with slow lings. It's just not great. It's not the greatest move. Slow lings are the worst units in the game. As this Stalker Mothership Core combo is proving. Yeah, the Stalker Mothership combo is a little bit too good for you lings, unfortunately. How many kills are you going to get? Mothership Core 3... Four kills on that Stalker. That's a lot of dead stuff. Eight units killed by Swaghar so far. Both, all of it, by this one Stalker and this one Mothership Core, interestingly enough. Macro Hatch coming up. Swaghar says, finally, 
taking down those slow lings. Swagger also going for a third base in the traditional location, just to the right of his main base. Resonating Glaives on the way for Swagcar, increasing the attack speed of Adepts by a good old 45%. And Alaire on the way for the Zerg player at the natural base. We've actually seen quite a bit of that recently, where Zergs are getting their Alaires away from their main. Usually in the natural, sometimes in their third. I don't know. I don't know what it's all about, but it's all good. Hmm. <laughs> Gateway, 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 forge, forge, coming up for Swagcar at this third, nope, in the main base, rather. Overlord scouting in for Cut Your Ribbon, checking out to see exactly what is going on. I love the macro hatch decision. I love Cut Your Ribbon. If you're having a hard time spending your money, go ahead and do that. Just get a macro hatch. You'll be fine. Swagcar moving in with those adepts, trying to get some murder done. And should be able to, except for this big old group of lings. It's going to defend right here in the natural base, pinning them up against the wall. Ah, oh, Ravagers mixed in two. Corrosive Biles tossed down, trying to kill these adepts before they can Sionic Transfer. And getting, nope, all of them but two, who just Sionic Transfer right next door, so the army cleans them out too. Rough, rough go of it so far from Swaghar, I would say. Um, that's a lot of dead stuff. Resources lost here is 1,000 to 900. So cut your, I guess... What the heck thousand stuff did you lose? Lings, I guess? I don't know. Probably just z lings. Lots and lots of dead lings. Either way, pretty even on that count. But adepts, that extra gas loss is never a good situation to be in at all. All the extractors have been taken so far from Ribbon. Although not actually mining from the extractors at the third. Taking a fourth base to the south of the natural base. And what do we got? Robotics facility for Swagar. All right, all right. So now we're going to do this thing. Adepts didn't really work out that well. Going for Zealot Legs, an upgrade here at the Twilight Council, getting Templar. At the same time, turning them into Archons. And then I have to imagine this robotics facility is going to be used for Immortals, just because they're so good. They're so good against Zerg if they go Roach, if they go Ultra. Although, it, unfortunately, it is a Spire for Ribbon. So maybe Immortals are not the way you want to go. We'll see what Swagcar does with this, though. No Immortals have been produced yet, so keep that in mind. Injects coming up. Consecutive Injects from Ribbon. Has five Queens out for the five hatches that he has. One, two, three, four, and five, including this macro-style hatch. Ribbon is staying up one base on his opponent. That's exactly what you need to do in order to win in StarCraft II. Archon with plus one attack, along with the rest of those ground units. And it's going to be a Warp Prism. For Swagcar, so going to do some special tactics here, a la White Raw. I'm sure that Swagcar has watched a lot of White Raw, as everybody loves that guy. He is super great. Small attack of Lings from Ribbon, trying to come up and just try to see what is going on. See what's happening here in Swagcar's base. Going to knock down these Destructibles just outside the third, but some Stalkers and some Archons show up. Archons can shoot through that. Archons can shoot through the Destructible to Lings on the other side. That's crazy. What is their range? Three? I guess that's enough. Just barely enough. To make that happen. So it's going to be Zealot Archon. Which I like. As a Zerg player, I find that strategy very difficult to deal with. If I'm going to be honest with you guys. Ling attack now on the right side for Cut Your Ribbon. Trying to knock down these rocks just outside the third. You can't see these being knocked down. See this? See how you can't see that happening? Uh, some Lings are dying out at an attempted fourth base. Location from Swagcar just outside of his third. And these Lings are going to be able to get through here. They have plus one melee attack. That helps their DPS quite a bit. Double Stargate from Swagcar being produced. And here comes Swagcar. Does he have Observer with his army? He does. Observer killing Creep Tumors or spotting so everybody else can kill Creep Tumors. Lings can take down these Stargates pretty quickly. There's three of them. Phoenix being produced. The army showing up at the, th uh, the fourth, rather. And it's going to be Ling. Ravager. There's the recall. There is the recall. Swagcar gets the crap on out of there. He's going to lose that fourth. He's forced to cancel the fourth base as the Lings making themselves a very nuisancey indeed. A zealot attack here in the main, getting taken down by all the Lings on Earth. Corrosive Biles getting rid of that Warp Prism, maybe? And yes, does take care of the Warp Prism. Oh, Swagar. Oh, Swagar. Difficult move there, indeed. Replanting the fourth. Lings coming on into the third. Not quite sure what they want to attack. And then, can they actually not get through? There's a bit of a wall here with pylons and gateways and assimilators. I don't... That might be Ling-proof. That's very surprising. Oh, look at that overlap, though. All right, fair enough. 
So the Lings are trying to take down those pylons. Can't quite do it as a bunch of zealots show up with plus one, plus one. Pretty scary stuff. Uh, Swagar is getting an immortal. I don't know what... I mean, none of this stuff is armored that Ribbon has. It's all Lings. It's all Ravagers. I mean, it's going to be assume Mutas or something. Ah, Lurker Den. Never mind. Does he know about that Lurker Den? He doesn't know about the Lurker Den, but uh, Immortals are very good against Lurkers. So maybe a lucky move by Swagcar. Maybe just good game sense. That's something that exists, right? Archon Zealot trying to go against the mass of Ribbon's army here. Coming up the Raptor to have better position. Corrosive taking down an Archon. You don't see that every day. At least I don't. Anyway. And still flying around. Some Phoenix mixed in just in case any Mutas show up. I don't think there are any. There's 17 Hydras for Ribbon, but actually hasn't done anything with that Spire. He has one, right? Yeah, he's got a Spire. He just hasn't done anything with it. Corrosive Biles being tossed on down. And actually going to take down this attempted fifth by Ribbon very easily. And then recall home because guess what? There's more Lings here. More Lings at the third. Can they take down the Stargates before the army shows up? No, but they got a gateway. That's pretty good. Was that a gateway? I think that was a gateway. Or a warp gate, rather. Lings come into their dooms and run out once again. Ribbon has pretty good reaction times. Resources lost. 3,500 for the Protoss. 2,500 for Cut Your Ribbon. Here comes an attack by Ribbon. Thinks about knocking down the debris to make the avenue of attack easier, but instead gets distracted by these zealots that I think were heading up to the 5th and then got, kind of got waylaid there. Kind of sort of got waylaid. Swagar up along the left side. Nexus, pylon, pylon, nexus. Lings on top of cannons at the third base, but an Archon is defending there as well and does have five kills. Ling trying to knock down a pylon here at this attempted fifth by Swaghar. Army just sitting outside from Ribbon. Upgrades plus one missile attack for all these Hydras and these Ravagers mixed on in. I mean, if Zealots can get on top of Hydras, they're really good, actually, because Hydras don't have many hit points. It's just if there's fungal growth, if there's kiting going on with the Hydras, it's very difficult for the Zealots to do much of anything at all. Phoenix, again, a little bit useless, as Ribbon went for the Spire and did nothing with it. So I don't know... I don't know what Swagar is trying to do here, but he's keeping the Phoenix with the army, just in case, I suppose. Attempted Warprism Harass... Oh, there are some Corruptors here! Corruptors taking down this warp prism that are warping that is warping in zealots at this base. Another huge battle down here. Storms on top of all of the Zerg, though. Beautiful storms. Indeed, Swagar decides to back on off. Zealots trying to do stuff, but a bunch of roaches show up. Clear them out of that third base. Ribbon doing a great job. Storm on top of the Hydras, on top of the Ravagers. Lurkers are burrowing on in there, but they're getting destroyed before they can do much of anything else. Excellent job there by Swagar. Just clearing through that army. Lings trying to sneak their way on up into this natural base. There's a cannon. There's a warping of Zealot to pre prevent that from happening. Army supply is 117 to 98. Swagcar has a nice lead right now. Income tab 75 to 59 in favor of the Zerg player as well. How many workers killed? 20 workers killed by Swagcar. And four by Ribbon. Zealot attack here at the third did a lot more damage than I thought it would. Huh. All right, more Lurkers coming in for the Ribbon. Changelings being tossed down by Overseers as well. Killing Creep Tumors, keeping that Creep from getting too out of control is a thing that all Protoss players should definitely do. Terrans at the same time, but, I mean, we're watching Protoss right now, so that's why I said Protoss. Ravagers, Lings, trying to take out this army from a distance as none of this for Swagcar is really super distancey. There's a couple Stalkers and three Immortals, and that's it. Lurkers... Really causing trouble now. If you have a huge lurker line like that, then it evaporates zealots. Like, they're not even there. I'm trying to sneak around this left side. There are Tempest for Swagcar. Making Tempest out of his Stargate now. I mean, all right. Tempests are pretty good against lurkers just because they have the distance. The lurkers aren't usually going anywhere. Zealots getting massacred along this right side. Big attack by Ribbon here at the fourth base of Swagcar. To defend it, though, is Swagcar. He's got his Archons. He's got his Phoenix. He's got his Zealots. He's forcing Ribbon back, but the Lurkers causing some big-time trouble here. But going for it anyway is Swaghar. Archon's trying to clear them out. Can't quite do it. Big army remaining for Ribbon. This fourth base is in a huge amount of trouble. Corruptors are dying, but Immortals standing back trying to kill Hydras. Lifting the Hydras with the Phoenix. Beautiful play. Something we'll see a lot from the pros. Archons are dying. Photon Overcharge finally getting into this mix. 13 kills on that Immortal. Lifting the Lurkers 
out of the ground as the Tempest sniped them from distance. And do manage to kill all the Lurkers. There are still some Ravagers here. And trying to kill some of these Templar as they're morphing in. Tempests taking out Ravagers left and right here. Bunch of Lings show up. That's the reinforcements from Ribbon trying to take down everything. Yes, getting rid of all of the Zealots, all of the Archons. Cannon here as well, trying to do stuff. But the Lings do have that plus two, plus one. Zealot somehow survives with three hit points and five kills to his name. Plus one, plus one, plus two. Having been upgraded on that guy. So where are we at? 43 to 40, 50 army supply in favor of a ribbon. 78 to 58 worker supply in favor of our Protoss buddy here. Plus one air weapons being researched for the Tempest. I don't know. I mean, I guess this definitely could work. I'm going to put myself... Uh, strictly on the definitely could work bandwagon. Replanting his fifth base here is Ribbon, or rather his fourth. Whatever he lost. Whatever he lost a while ago. Getting a spore crawl crawler there for defense as well. And making 13 Corruptors. Are you going Greater Spire or are you just going Mass Corruptor here? I mean, Mass Corruptor is good against Tempest just because they do extra damage versus Massive Air stuff, which is what this is. Armored Mechanical Massive is our Tempest. As they move up to the top right side, possibly trying to kill some more creep. Got some Tempest mixed in. Got some Archons here, too. Trying to regroup with everybody. Bring the Archons. Don't allow the Templar to just take shots directly to the face. That is not a good look. That is not a good feeling at all. All right, what you got? Here comes a lot of Corruptors. Storms on top of everything. Blanketing Storms here. Corruptors do not care. They're not moving at all. Archons trying to kill everybody out. Tempest starting to fall. Everybody on the ground getting killed here as well. Ribbon looking pretty darn good here. There are a few Corruptors left. Corrosive Biles landing, trying to kill the Tempest from the ground. Tempest gone. Still two remaining, but there's four or five or six Corruptors remaining. And amazing Corrosive Biles getting rid of that last Tempest. Some Zealots show up, but it's not going to be enough. Still more Tempest from Swaghar. Oh, man. Swagcar, you got a lot of money in the bank, buddy. You got to spend it. Floating over a 1,000 gas and a 1,000 minerals. He is making more zealots, more immortals. Trying to do this thing. And Ribbon decides to cut his losses. He decides to back out just a little bit. He has a handful of roaches, a handful of corruptors. And he's going to pull out just a little bit here. So both players licking their wounds a little bit. They've lost a lot. 27,300 lost for Swagcar. 29,200 lost for Ribbon. Getting plus three attack at Swagcar. Getting some Void Rays, which is fun. Some Immortals, more and more Archons. And the Income tab is 79 to 49. So Swagcar definitely has that economic advantage. Although he does seem a little bit oversaturated at most of his bases as he's mined out of his main base. He's mined out of his natural as well. Might uh, want to look at expanding here, possibly just to the right of his fourth base, of his third base rather. Along this bottom side, that seems like a safe locale to go. Lurkers coming in here. Creep Tumors spawning as well. And actually taking the gold is Swagcar, which immediately gets scouted by an Overlord. And the entire army for Ribbon shows up to take down this base. So Lurkers hitting it. Corruptors could use Caustic Spray if they wanted, but... Apparently, Ribbon is not interested in doing that. Forcing a cancel on the base. Running for his life is Swagar now. <laughs> yeah, I think that was actually just bad luck. Ribbon was sending an Overlord there anyway to whoop some creep. And just happened to get there at the exact moment that Swagar was trying to build a Nexus. So was able to force a cancel. Voider is here with plus one attack, plus two plasma shields. That's the one thing about shields that's good to have is that it's a shared upgrade over your entire army. So whether it's ground or whether it's air... Shields is the way to go, including buildings, too. Sneaky base down here by Ribbon, bottom right side, and a double expansion along this top side here, too. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's six and seventh bases for Ribbon. But again, he's only on 46 Harvesters, so I don't know how he's planning on saturating all of those bases. Swagcar is the opposite problem, where he has too many workers and not enough bases. He is, again, taking that base at the bottom, as I suggested he do just a couple of minutes ago now. And Swagcar is up 194 to 158 total supply, 115 to 112 army supply. So again, Swagcar just has that bigger advantage when it comes to the economy side of things. But here he comes, Ribbon, moving into this fourth base. He's got Roaches with plus two missile attack. Coming in, taking down cannons very easily. Roach, Ravager, 
The army is showing up. Zealots in the front. Archons. Void Rays using that prismatic alignment. Really burning through the Corruptors. Storms on top of everything. Doing great. There are Queens here as well. Void Rays burning through everybody. Not taking shots from anyone. All those Corruptors are gone. Oh, all those Corruptors are gone. Zealots right on top of Lurkers. Taking those suckers down. Spore Crawler planted forward. Dead as well. It's 169 to 80 total supply. That was a massive victory for Swagcar. Did you lose your... You did not lose your Observer because you're killing Creep Tumors, but keep it up. Press the advantage. There's a Zealot down here at Ribbon's base. Ling's actually managing to knock down Swaghar's fifth base there while that attack was going on. Not a good look. Zealot finally taken down at Ribbon's fourth or fifth or whatever it is along this right side. War Prism's still here, but getting chased by Hydra's run. Nope, not going to happen. Dead. Dead War Prism. Resources lost, 31,000 to 38,000. Again, Riven has lost a lot more. That I mean, that engagement alone was a big deal for Swagar. Great storms. The Void Rays were clutch. Seven kills on that one Void Ray. Three kills on that Void Ray. Archon's doing great, too. Seventh base on the bottom right by Riven is found and discovered and immediately destroyed by Swagar, who is heading north with vengeance in mind killing overlords not supply blocking his opponent because it's 196 to 101 at total supply swaghar looking strong there's a lot of lurkers here though a lot of lurkers here at this fourth base for ribbon throwing up spine crawlers static defense as well i just think it's worker count it's worker count for ribbon it's nice to have seven bases but you got to have more than 50 harvesters that's something they actually added i think in the latest patch of starcraft 2 is where if you hover on the top right side when you're playing a game, it shows you your worker count. So that's nice. I know I have trouble sometimes when I'm playing to know exactly how many workers I have. I'm not good at math in general, and especially when I'm playing and it's super stressful, that's when the bad things happen. Zealots, Archon, well, great positioning here by Ribbon again at the bottom of a ramp. With the Lurkers, it's a bit of a choke, forcing Swagcar to go through that. Voidry is just saying, you know what, let's just do this thing, but there's a lot of Hydras. There are a lot of Hydra. So it's Hydra, Lurker, Overseer right now. Taking another base in the top left is Swagar. And Swagar says, if you're not going to engage me, I'm just going to kill all your stuff. How's that sound? Walking through here, killing Creep Tumors, trying to kill drones as well. Not many to get, but they are getting most of them. That fourth base falls. There are some static defense spore crawlers here getting destroyed by Zealots as well. That plus three attack really helping immensely here. Ribbon, not quite sure what to do. Finally defending here at the natural base. As the lair is morphing into a hive. That is a late hive. That's like the world's latest hive. Whew. All right. So Swagar up 196 to 115 total supply. There's static defense everywhere. These lurkers are a problem. Storms on top of everybody. And Swagar decides to back on out. He doesn't want to engage into these burrowed lurkers if it's all possible that he can help. But the lurkers unburrow. And Swagcar pushing right on in. Storms coming up on top of the Lurkers. Not the most efficient use of anything, unfortunately. Storm does a decent amount of damage, but Lurkers have so many hit points is the problem. 200. 200 total hit points here. Void Ray is trying to burn through. Storms on top of the Hydra's Hydra count getting very, very low. And that's it. A GG. A GG from Ribbon. Swagcar calls the GG as well. Ribbon's defeated and Swagcar is victorious swagar wants to stick around and kill some more stuff he's dancing he is dancing with his templar there that's always fun gg from swagar he's using the little happy party emoji there as well and he's left the game yeah that was crazy that was a pretty good back and forth there ribbon doing some great work killing a bunch of nexuses i wish i could tell how many he had destroyed but he definitely killed this one down here i think he did kill the fifth base as well and that gold base that was attempted to be constructed up top left <clears throat> but i mean swagcar just keep coming back he had the better economy he ended up with 75 harvesters about 20 more than his opponent most of the time here ribbon had good ideas he didn't really have the macro to catch up and to keep up the void rays were very fun as well they definitely paid for themselves taking down lurkers uh taking down overseers corruptors especially in that one battle they were massive and that was, uh, they were pretty much the MVP there. Unless these Archons have a ton of kills. you have a ton of kills, Archons? Eh, not really. Some of you are new. That Immortal's got 15. That's pretty good. All right, so that's it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter and Facebook and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.